Welcome to KYD on Route 66, Episode 2. Uh, we are having a blast on this series. Well, we're having a blast with you because the mm -hmm. comments came back and they were so much fun to read. <laughs> we actually read some to Gary. Yes. He was floored. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, honestly, though, uh, you are funny. There are a lot of really funny people yes. in the community. So we appreciate all your positive feedback. Like I said, we're having a great time. Uh, this has exceeded our expectations, yeah. Route 66. And so there's a lot more to come. We're going but strong. If you follow KYD, if you've been following us for the last few years, you know what we do in November of each year, and that is the KYD hat. It's back. Uh, we've got some new styles, so we wanted to share with you where to get them, what's new, and of course, some important information on like supply chain issues. Normally, it's limited time, and then we box them all together and we mm -hmm. send them out. This year, because we could only get our hands on so many hats, it uh, limited quantity. So if you've been waiting for a KYD hat or ever thought you wanted one, now is the time. Now is the time. They're super fun, but what we love best is the community that comes around this endeavor, yes. right? Um, you meet other people at campsites, mm -hmm. you let us tag along on your epic adventures, mm -hmm. and we get to give a dollar back for every single hat to Toys for Tots. That's the yeah. Marines run Toys for Tots, so every year we give them a mm -hmm. donation, and then they write us back and they let us know that you and us together are making an impact. So that yeah. is yeah. like hands down the best thing for us you get some um, Charlie at the end hair. of the year. Charlie yes. hair for this. All right, so we've got the old-fashioned truckers. Um, this is a new, a new color, which I really like this year, too. Too, yes. The navy blue. This one has the beautiful flag oh, on the that. side. And then um, this I probably wear more than than any of them just because of the structure. Um, this hat's a couple years old actually, and it still looks great. But this is my personal favorite. It's, it's a also available in light gray, which Comes is really in cool. Blue. So a couple different colors on the hats. You got to share the knit hat. Okay, this is 100% acrylic. I tell you that because it passes the itch test. Mm -hmm. Ladies, you hear me. It gets itchy in here, yeah. and this one doesn't get me itchy. And let's say you want to purchase this for someone who might be getting over cancer. They need mm -hmm. to warm up that beautiful head of theirs. Um, you could do this without the itchiness. Yes. So, And then, of course, um, we have all the flex fits. We have the flex fit in the super small sizes, like youth, to the really big size eight flex fit hats that don't have the thing in the back, which I know a lot of people like. We call that the wise hat yes. because you have a big noggin, yeah. super smart, mm -hmm. or you um, maybe are wearing glasses. That's what these are fantastic for because yes. they don't touch the side of your glasses. Okay, where to get them? keeperdaydream.com forward slash hat. And uh, if you've been looking for one, don't wait because we have limited quantity, especially of the dream hat, super limited quantity. Yeah, give me that one back. And um, <laughs> uh, a dollar goes to Toys for Tots. So we appreciate your support and we appreciate your support every year. I think it's the community that drives us. We love doing this. We never would have thought KYD merch would like bring like our community together like this. So we just want to say thank you. I think it's even more, yes, say thank you. And I think it's like you started out. It's fun to read your comments. Mm -hmm. It's fun to go on adventures with you. It's fun to see this out in the wild. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, thank you so much for being here and we better get we back get at back. it. Not to Route 66 as you've let us know, but Route 66. So yes. let's get back over there and we'll go check out Abe Lincoln's house and you'll meet Gary's brother, the hot dog giant. <laughs> I feel like I'm on a rocket ship. Yeah. Right now I do straight lines. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now. Do you remember what I was going to do before I left the RV park? What do you think you'd like to do here? I want to walk on the original road. Okay. Cool. Come on out. All right. Ah, what was it? Cool. There's a lot of Lincoln history seeped into the beginning of Route 66. So if you're a Lincoln fan, um, if you are a history buff, maybe you love doing a little research on the Civil War, this is part of all of that like travel and learning as you go. But what I find fascinating about Pontiac is the whole town is in on it, okay? There's beautiful paths to walk and there's all kinds of places to go in and see. And you can literally drive your car up in front of the murals. How fun mm -hmm. is that? You got the stamp? Yeah. You got it without Gary? Well, I was Gary. I was waiting for Gary. Oh. <laughs> Come on, let's get it stamped. Okay. And then look around. Oh, Woo! Yeah. Oh, nice. Oh, that's a nice oh, one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's good. Hi. Did you guys get that book? Oh, you did? Yep. Let's do this. Yeah, What you got the book you were looking for. Yes, I know. Hey, look. It's Jim and I. Oh, yeah, here we go. This, we gotta, we gotta go see oh, Kevin next. Oh, we gotta go all of them. Yeah where everything is. Gary's just taking it all in. He's taking it all in. 
He's only been to the launching pad. That's right. He was like, I had no idea. It's so big. It's so much. There's so much. There's so much to see. You think he's retaining it all? I think so. Pontiac, you see, where you, you are here, how does it know? Oh my gosh. If you enjoy conversations, Route 66 is for you because people are in these different locations and they can't wait to chat with you. They're gonna yes. share the history, they're gonna share things to do, best places to eat. It's like the friendliest mother road. That's what it's called, mm -hmm. the mother road. <laughs> yes, I am, I'm a bird dog. I am. Oh, thanks for saying hi first before you got your bird. That was nice. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you guys see my bird? Did you see my bird? I got a new bird. A new bird because I messed that other bird up. <laughs> there she goes. We'll let her air up for a little bit. I'll go do my walk around. And I think Trish is going to make a couple turns in here so that we can start the learning process with Trish driving because the sooner that she gets behind this wheel, the better it is for everybody. Look at all these dials. Yes. Ready for me. Ready for you. All right. How are you feeling? Glad I'm in a parking lot. Okay. Yes. All right. I'm gonna give you just some basic instruction. I don't know if you want to get out on the highway or not. I just want to. Like, oh no. no. Just drive around here. Yeah. Start to understand wheel cut and some things. I'm also speaking. Uh, I will go on the highway. Let me see okay. if I get this technically correct. This is my. <laughs> what? This is. This is, is this? in very slow, slow speeds. This will if your if your gas pedal gets stuck, you can just kind of lift it up. Help. It, you'd be amazed how easy it is. Okay, so that's okay. gas that sometimes gets stuck at slow speeds. And that's brake, which yeah. all depends on the air pressure. You put your foot on it. It's a nice big pedal. Oh, oh. I gotta. Whoop, whoop. There you go. Oh, would you look at that? So now, in order to go, you need to put your foot on the brake. There you go. And then you need to put it in drive. That's it. Okay, and now. Wait. That's it. You're good. How do you know it's drive? It well, looked like it was in neutral before. Well, don't pay attention to that orange thing. Just you know it's in drive because you just you heard it, right? Yeah, but how do I know that it didn't just? It is. That's neutral. What's brake? No, that's that's reverse. That's park. Reverse. That's, reverse. that's yeah. neutral. There is there is no park. How do you make it stop? Air brake. But then how do you make it stop permanently? Air brake. Air brake. Neutral. Neutral. Like a, a neutral. neutral. Like it's a manual essentially. So how do you make it stop on a hill? Brake. brake. You're holding the brake. What happens when you're done holding the brake? You put it in neutral and you put the you in. Well, that's why that one time when we were in uh in that in that um, Mama Gertrude's or Mama Gertie's RV park and I was on that hill and I was running out of air. That's why I was getting worried. Huh? I think I was better not knowing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Drive. You're in drive and you yes. get your foot on the brake. Foot's on okay. The brake. Now. Push that, push that air brake. Hold on, in. can we, before you just go, if you have a tendency to <laughs> just go. Go ahead and push that in. Push that little button in. Why? Because that's the air brake. You gotta take it off. That's what I was talking about. Yeah. How do you make it stop? Push you it guys in. just kept talking about this air brake. Okay. Yeah. You're gonna need your whole hand. There you go. Wow. Okay, now when you release the brake, you're gonna go, and when you start going, turn left. So when you go down a big grade, are you just pulling on that? No, 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 no. Think of that as a parking brake. Oh, that's what I was asking the whole time. Okay. 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 All right. Well, I said it's whoa. Like it's amazing. Yeah. It's already going. Yeah. Go. Need... Got your left. Whoop. Okay. <laughs> the brakes are. Sorry. They're okay, they're okay. they're good. They really work. Okay. There you go. There you go. Now, okay, that's it. And then, all right. There you go. And why is that too hard? Well, you don't want to go all the way, or you know, I mean, it is it is an old piece of. Oh, Charlie wants a little action here. Charlie's like, hello, I want to sit here. You okay, realize, that's straight. Okay. You realize this is my full stretch, right? Okay, there you go. Yeah, keep turning left. Brake. Left. Okay. Whoop. Right. It breaks really well. Oh, there you go. You're good. Yeah. See, I got okay, this. Okay. You want to accelerate a little bit? No. Nope. nope. Okay. There we go. Yeah, already on the horn. <laughs> All right, this is good. Okay, now take your foot off the gas. Okay, it did not stick. But if it did stick, reach down there and pull that up just so you know how to get that up. See that? There you yeah. go. That's all it takes. Okay. All right, you want to accelerate out? What's our plan? Just go to the end of the street if you want. Okay. I'll do that. Try to stay in the lines just so you give you some confidence of yeah, that. Yeah, that's a good idea. Well, why don't you go like as if we're going? Because I think that'll help. Well, I am. I'm going. 
going. No, like go. Like as if we were going and you were driving out of here, you'd go. There it kind of sticks a little. It sticks a little, I know. I would, I, I'd, I'd love to make it a little less sticky. All right. Keep going. Well, I, I, I'd like to get to a downshift so you can feel what that feels like. Well, this is how I feel comfortable. Okay. Okay, we are on the grass over here. When Route 66 came along in 1926, it was said to be the shortest, best, and most scenic route from Chicago to LA. John Steinbeck called the stretch of 2,448 miles the Mother Road, and it really did seem like the road of flight because travelers could now bump up their speed to 40 miles per hour, which seemed pretty fast at the time. By the 40s, Nat King Cole gave us a theme song, the 60s gave us a hit TV show, and the nostalgia was seeped deep into Americana with gleaming cars and neon lights, making this pilgrimage the most famous in America. But cars grew faster and drivers preferred wider, higher speed highways. Route 66 declined as it was replaced in segments by the interstate highway system, and the road was officially retired as a U.S. highway in 1985. But there's always been an emotional pull to the route and everything it represents. In the words of Congress, it has become a symbol of the American people's heritage of travel and their legacy of seeking a better life. Oh yeah. Sharing stories, that kind yep. of thing. All right, let's do it. How many steps is gonna make you feel like you walked on the road? We're, we gotta walk in this. Are you not feeling the old, the vintage road? Are you not feeling it? There's just a slight personality difference between you and me. I like to go from point A to point B. I. You know how many fruit stands I've wanted to pull over and, <laughs> and look at, and there would have been a reward for you. And you're like, we gotta walk on the original road. Okay, here's the deal. There's a reason, there's a reason why I want to do this right now. Why? Because I was talking to one of the gentlemen in the Pontiac oh, Museum. Oh, the museum. And he said that Illinois is one of the best states on Route 66 to really get access to the old road. Okay. Because this was westbound, what we're walking on right now. And what we're driving on was eastbound on the second iteration of the road, if I'm getting all this right. Okay. And... As it got out of Illinois and in through Missouri, then they didn't have the separated interstate. They went to a two lane. Got it. And so this is this is a very preserved section. Then he said, as you continue to go west on Route 66, the old route went through. Oh, I'm not. It went, it went over and around the mountains, mm -hmm. and the and the interstate went right through them. So sometimes you you could be two miles from the old interstate Get or it. from but Route 66. My favorite part is that they want to connect this whole old road and make it a bike path. That would be awesome. I think that would be really cool. So you could ride your bike from Chicago to St. Louis on Route 66. That'd be fantastic. Well, let's add it to the list of things to do. So anyhow, here we are, out on the old road and the old girl, the old bird. We're doing it. We're doing it. Oh, Ryburn Place. Oh, that's where you get the thing stamp. We might as well. Is there anything you need at, at this place? Um, no. Water? Okay. Stamp number three. No way. There we go. Stamp number three. Nice job, Dad. I don't know if we're going to get them all, but we're three for three. Oh, they're all so interesting. Yeah. So we're just outside of Illinois State University. Everybody's in their red, and they're all walking to the game. It's kind of fun. Hi, 
Charlie, mean you look very funny. Easy on the <laughs> It stopped raining just for us. Okay, you know who this is? Who? Gary's brother. <laughs> he used to live in Chicago. They brought him down here and they installed the hot dog. <laughs> That's so great. I love these giant men, huh? Yeah. God, he looks just like Gary. I see the similarities. Yeah, the resemblance? Yeah, I sure do. All right, they don't have a bobblehead of the giant. I kind of thought that everybody would have that. I know, we're gonna need to get on that, okay? Well, I know, but I wanted to collect them as we were going down the route. Well, I was speaking to the people that... Oh, okay, yes. yeah. Well, she said she would. She said that's a great idea. I don't know what... They have every other bobblehead in there. Oh, jeez. But it's all sports. Oh, I said, darn. but no hot dog bobblehead? She you gotta have no. a hot dog bobblehead. Well, there's gotta be somewhere else we can get it. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Oh, that's awesome. There. All done. Charlie and I are wondering when we get to go get lunch. Oh, I can't hear you. It's too loud out here. We want lunch. Charlie oh, you and do? I want lunch. Yeah, everything seems to be closed or we would eat here. Okay. So. What's next? Um, let's make our way to Springfield. Okay. Okay. Okay, I saw Abe, he's doing fine. He is. He's done, it's kind of raining outside. So, um, let's just straight to Springfield. Let's, please, let's go <laughs> please. Um. There's so much going on in this car. There's laundry filled in the back. There's trash on the hood. But you know what? We're gonna drop that trash off, not worry about the laundry, and we're gonna go straight to the Lincoln Library Museum, his house, and I believe where he was buried, right down the street. So let's do it. here and we only have an hour not <laughs> Don't sufficient. Admit that. not sufficient <laughs> this is amazing it's really good and the timelines so that kids can really get a scope of like when things were happening and when he was evolving into what he was most known for not just kids husbands too <laughs> some of us have attention spans that only last an hour in a museum Pardon but me? no I'm talking to me but both, both of us, us. maybe okay. <laughs> But it doesn't matter because uh, one of the things I really liked, we came in and the gentleman said, Are you just showing up? I said, he said, we said yes. He says, okay, here's what you're gonna do. Go to that cabin, that'll take 12 minutes. Come to this presentation. This is we're seeing, this is 12 minutes. That leaves you 39 minutes to go over there and there. So I really feel like we're actually maximizing it. And because no one's here, because it's four o'clock on a Sunday, we're really kind of taking it all in. Trisha's doing all the reading. I'm doing all the camera holding. This is working out great. So sometimes we ask ourselves, is it worth it or is it not worth it to go the extra mile and visit a smaller town like Springfield? In our opinion, it's worth it. You really get a hands-on experience. You go to the Presidential Library, wonderful demonstrations. You come here, you literally get to walk the streets of where Lincoln lived. This is his house. So I think that it's a hands-on experience that is a pleasure and it will stick with you for a long time. So Trish and I are just looking at some of these homes right across the street from this area right here and we've heard of historical districts but then there's then there's being down the street from Abe Lincoln. That's 
That's a new level of historical district. Is this the first RV? <laughs> but it kind of is because they use these as kind of a rally. They would come into the neighborhood and they would have a political rally. And so they would like drum up the whole neighborhood and start talking. Oh, Isn't that cool? Interesting. And there were, um, it was 21 wide awake clubs and they were young um, pro Lincoln supporters. Isn't that funny? Mm -hmm. How long would you suggest someone spend here in this area? I think they could spend a day. Yeah, just spend one night and spend the whole day doing mm -hmm. your, your Abe thing. Yeah, I think you could do the museum. I think the museum Minimum requires, two hours. I was going to say even three. Minimum if two. You're gonna, if you're really going to read everything, because then there's a, a couple different uh, theaters that have movies mm -hmm. that were exceptionally well done. Well, exceptionally I, well done. I think you really need to soak it in, mm -hmm. especially before you come here, because then it really gives you an idea of who Abraham Lincoln was. Yes. And then you walk the street and you're like, oh, it's kind of cool. So you're saying do the library first. Yes. And then the home. You might be interested to know that the visitor center, Lincoln's home, is actually a national historical site, which is a national, run by the National Park Service, mm -hmm. which means there are park rangers walking around, mm -hmm. answering questions. You can do tours. We don't know this, but I'm pretty sure maybe your national park pass, which I know you have, because you gotta have that. It's All our veers, that is a, to have. It's a essential card. Hey, and shout out to um, park rangers. Y'all are awesome. Trish really? is throwing around the y'alls. Y'all. All right, so that was a good experience. Highly recommend. It is worth it. Totally. And I will also say, I'm kind of digging the Route 66 vibe. vibe. Yeah. I kind of thought it was, I mean, I had some preconceived notions of just thinking it was just small town after small town, novelty, just like, you know, like big, big statues. statues. But, but I tell you, I'm digging hands. the big statues. But then when you think about it at a big level, I mean, we've done Chicago, but Chicago, yeah. St. Louis, Amarillo. Mm -hmm. Like We're gonna Flagstaff, go to Arizona, and then Santa Monica, there's like there's big California. destinations. I think it's a really cool way to get west. Yes, I was thinking through, okay, who would want to do this? Mm -hmm. It's somebody who's moving, like maybe you spent the summer in the Midwest or even in the East Coast, mm -hmm. and then you meander down Route 66 if you haven't already explored your national parks, because mm -hmm. there's some pretty epic national parks yep. up high. Mm -hmm. um, and then you cruise down and you start getting your snowbird on, and you hang out down south. You know, yeah, Southern it's been California, fun. It's Southern so far, of course, we're, you know, we're early on. Early on. <laughs> but so far, Route so 66 good. is exceeding my expectations. That's all I have to say. Good. Let's fire up the bird. Well, there you have it. Another Route 66 episode as we make our way west to California. Who would have thought there was so much to do and see on the Mother Road? Join us next week from St. Louis and the Gateway Arch, plus a stop to the famous Ted Drew's frozen custard. Don't forget to visit keepyourdaydream.com slash hat and thanks for your support. This is Gary, the Gemini Giant, wishing you smooth roads and fast Wi-Fi. See you again next Sunday. I know, you're Jones in the drive. Your, your, your turn is coming. I promise. <laughs> it's coming. Turn? Your turn? Are you ready? Didn't we say we're going? <laughs> the best part about the bird is we can actually just start it and go. So can we do that? <laughs> Charlie, you already took my chair. Come on, Charlie. Fine, but why does Gary get to sit up front? No. Okay, Charlie's like, uh, what's happening here? Uh, Mom's driving? Okay, all right, course. that's fine. There's a change in the force. Okay, now can you reach the brake? The lighting is so perfect, it really comes to life, doesn't it? It's, uh, it's pretty creepy, actually. <laughs> Alright, Trish, give me something good. I don't have anything. Oh, really? Come on. Tell everyone what I do. I point the camera at you and I say, go. Go. <laughs> and I usually have something to say, but... because you do all the reading. <laughs> listen, listen. I would read these plaques, but I, I gotta hold the camera. That's right, that's okay. right. What, what's our son doing? Think, what do you think of this whole... What do you think of visiting... What would you tell kids that want to go visit Abe Lincoln Presidential Library and his home? Hope your parents don't take long. Oh, come on. No, I thought it was good, right? I, I thought it was a good experience. I would say, well, Dad, probably made it obvious. No, I don't, though. I, I, I can't figure it out. It was right there, and now I can't. He's so upset about it. Look at him. Oh, he's dropped his rocket and everything. He's he's dropped his rocket. He thought he was going to see apart. his brother and he's not here. He's torn apart. He's torn apart. Mm -hmm. He's beside himself.